last scene we just saw was from a very popular Tuang piece called Nubian, meaning disguise. And the main character, Sun Chum, just killed the Mandarin who killed her husband. And as the story goes, she had to disguise herself to escape persecution. Now, Tuan is a very popular art form here in Vietnam, but what sets this performance apart from others is that lead character. It's Eleanor. She's an Australian who is studying Tuan here in Vietnam, and she's our guest for today. We're going to learn about how she got into this art form and her passion behind it. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Eleanor. just an extract of our Talk Vietnam broadcast back from July 2006. Now the image of an Australian girl who was able to master the Vietnamese folk art of Duong and Xiao really took Vietnamese audiences, TV channels, and journalists here in the country by storm. Now, uh, Eleanor Clapham, that girl, uh, also known as Huang Lan in Vietnamese, uh, have been performing, uh, has been performing a lot in the country in uh, 2006, and she became, by the later half of that same year, a prominent figure in the media. She was invited to perform at a lot of special occasions and also on national events. She had a one-women show, exclusive show, at the Hanoi Opera House, also a show at the APEC meeting, and then a TV program on the occasion of New Year's Eve in 2006. But after this peak of success, Eleanor disappeared. For the past four years, we haven't heard much from her here in the country. But now with much excitement, I'm happy to announce that she is now back to the country, uh, bringing us more of her amazing music, but in a new spin in her new live show uh, called The Awakening. So please join me in welcoming Eleanor back to Vietnam and also back to our show. Thank you very much, Eleanor, for coming back and for coming on to our show today. Um, so now I know a lot of people um, knew of you in 2006 and were very, very merative of you and your efforts to learn and to master the art of Duong and Chiao. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what happened after then? Well, after my show at the Ohana Opera House, um, to, for a lot of people, they considered that was a big success. And um, looking back, I can see how people would, um, would see it that way. But for me, I was, um, when I saw the footage of the show, I was actually very disappointed because I was um, asking too much of myself. I studied um, the Wong and Chow for two years and, um, and I wanted to perform both of them perfectly, just like a, a, a professional um, actor from Vietnam. And, um, and that was a big ask of myself. Um, and the, the second thing was that um, I really, really love the art form and I'm, I feel a sense of obsession for it. But I had this, um, this question that kept circling around in my head of how am I going to use uh, traditional Vietnamese theatre um, in my life and uh, what am I going to do with it in order to really make a career for myself. So uh, I went back to Australia and for about a year, I didn't do anything, and I actually um, I got so disheartened that I actually gave up altogether and said, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm going to, I'm going to do something else. And, um, and that, at that time was basically the worst time of my life, because um, I didn't have a sense of, of drive or um, purpose, and um, I felt like I was always standing at the crossroads, um, and I didn't know which way to go. And uh, I, I worked as a waitress in Sydney for about mm -hmm. a, a year, and, um, and that was a really hard time for me because I'd gone from being in the limelight in Vietnam where everywhere I went, people knew who I was, and, um, and people were, you know, congratulating me for my efforts, and, and I had sort of, you know, a really good reputation here. And then going back to Sydney, nobody knew, and nobody really cared, and, um, and it felt, it was such a sort of, um, such a plummet downwards. Um, and then after that, I, um, 
I decided I would wanted to be a personal trainer because I've, I've always been a dancer and I thought that, you know, I like helping people. I'm going to help people to lose weight. So I, I trained as a personal trainer for about three months <laughs> and then decided that that was definitely not the lifestyle for me. And yet again, it was like, you know, trying a different, a different road and know, knowing that it wasn't mm -hmm. the right road for me. Um, because personal training is a lot of early mornings and late nights and um, very little uh, personal for other people but no personal life for your own. Right, exactly. Um, so um, it, was a, it was a very dark time for me and I'm really glad that it happened because it taught me a lesson. Mm -hmm. And that lesson is that um, I believe that everybody has, um, has a personal legend that they need, a destiny that they need to live out. And the, reason, the way that we know what it is, is that it just makes us feel wonderful when we're doing it. And on the road to, um, to realizing your destiny, there's always going to be massive challenges and there's going to be times where you want to give up. And um, when you d if you give up, the, the feeling of, of um, emptiness and disappointment and sort of, um, sort of something missing in your life it's so um you can live with it but it's a real waste of of this life what brought you back on your track well i um i actually think it was a miracle in a way in that um i was um it was one year exactly after i'd um i decided you know to give up my dreams it's almost on the anniversary and um, I decided I'm going to go back to university and, um, and study something. I was deciding to b between law and medicine because I, I perceived that to be an easier path than you know, um, being an artist. And just before um, the, the academic year began, I received an email from a director in Singapore. And uh, he had seen my website and uh, he was doing a production about um, Bui Sun Fai, who was an artist who was obsessed with the art form Chell, and he wanted me to come over to Singapore and perform. It just felt like so out of the blue, it almost felt as if the universe or the world um, was trying to pull me back into my dreams. And, um, and so I went to Singapore and I performed, and uh, I performed three pieces from Chell. And it was just this amazing, refreshing experience of, um, of stepping back into the dream. And the audience in, in Singapore, just, they just loved it. And I had a standing ovation every night. Wow. And, um, and it was just, I just had, I had this sense of happiness that I hadn't had in a year. And so then after going to Singapore, I decided, since I'm already in Asia, I'll go to Vietnam for a week and mm -hmm. see my teachers. And, and I walked, uh, I went um, to, to Vietnam and I remember I was walking um, past Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum and I was thinking to myself, if a miracle like this can happen, maybe I can actually have my dreams. And uh, it sort of, it, it um, reinforced inside of me that, um, that I had an unfinished business. Mm -hmm. And so I started to think, what a, well, I, I can't just perform Duong and just Chow because um, even though it's very interesting, there's this sort of um, this problem in that people can't understand the lyrics and that they can enjoy sort of the performance, but I, wanted, I want people to understand. So I, I came up with this idea that just sort of came to me like, you know, heaven sent, that I was going to um, write pop music, which is something I'd always wanted to do. Um, it'd been a big dream of mine since I was a little girl. And in my music, I was going to take lots of influence from Duong and Chao. Mm -hmm. And that was going to be um, the, interesting about m thing, the interesting thing about my music, that when people talk about Eleanor Clapham's songs, they always relate it back to um, traditional Vietnamese um, theatre, music, costume, everything. Now, on June 26, with the live show called The Awakening, uh, Vietnamese audiences were given a chance to experience this uh, new form of Tung and Xiao in a different light, as uh, Eleanor has brought it to them, adding pop music to folk music. It was perfect fusion between the two. Uh, so we're going to now take a look at uh, the reception that this performance has received and how it turned out here in Hanoi. This is a dance modeling after dances of Tuong. 
a kind of Vietnamese traditional theater, together with traditional costume of Vietnam. Eleanor Clapham used this dance in the song Time to Shine, performing her awakening live show held at Hanoi Opera House on June the 26th. The show marked her success in combining the Vietnamese traditional opera, including Duong and Chao, with pop music. The live show took the audience by landslide. Đây là một cảm giác thật tuyệt vời đối với một bạn người ngoại quốc mà có một tấm lòng tham học hỏi về một nghệ thuật truyền thống đặc biệt của Việt Nam bởi nó nhuần nhuyễn giữa cái mới và cái cũ cái mới làm sao để cho nó phù hợp và cái cũ nó không mất đi bất ngờ thấy ngoài cái việc Hoàng Lan là cái người biểu diễn rất thành công mà còn là một người sáng tác và dựa trên cái chất liệu của tuồng trèo đã phát triển rất là thành công kết hợp với với cái âm nhạc hiện đại mà Bạch Vân cảm thấy rất là xúc động. The live show was divided into two parts, telling her journey to reach her dream and her love. With every song written straight from her emotions, the show, in some ways, reveals her dream in life, love and career for her entire journey. So as we just saw in the, uh, in the previous report, the performance of Awakening turned out to be a great success. Can you tell us a little bit about the show? Uh, yes, in the, in the program I perform 12 of my own songs. Um, I, every song I had English and Vietnamese lyrics, uh, which was a huge um, project in itself. <laughs> um, I, in every single song I took some sort of influence from um, Vietnamese traditional theatre. So for instance, in one song, um, Never Do, I, um, I, I sang and did a duong sword movement at the same time. Um, in another song, I play the drum. Uh, I wore a lot of traditional Vietnamese costumes. Um, there were two bands playing at once, um, a modern band and a traditional band. So I had a lot of a traditional Vietnamese influence fused with, you know, your normal kind of guitar, drums, piano, mm -hmm. uh, which was very exciting. I had 12 dancers to um, dance with me and um, I was oh, really unbelievably happy about the result with the, the, um, the dance that was created. And um, the pro program was split into two halves. So the first half, all of the songs are about my journey, um, about, um, first of all, about being in the limelight, about enjoying um, my success in mm -hmm. 2006, and then going on a journey of uh, feeling like you're standing at the crossroads, feeling like a crazy person that doesn't know um, what to do or what to say, mm -hmm. and then finally a sense of waking up and coming back to life. Yeah. Um, the second part of the program was all dedicated to love, and I, I really explored every single face that love has. So not just your romantic love of you know, standing in the wind and you know, looking into each other's eyes, but uh, it had an element of that, but also times when you feel like love is like a sword fight or times that um, you know after you've had an argument and there's a, a very typical thing for a man to do is just to, to give you um, the silent treatment mm -hmm. and for me silence is like a prison and so there's a song called hostage to your silence um, now we have a quote from you that I'd like to uh, read to our audiences here and also at home you said that I wrote each song coming straight from the heart Thus, the album is a way, a heartfelt chronological recording of my journey so far, as you said, The Awakening. Um, it's got pain and it's got sense of being lost and not knowing where to go. It's not waking up and realizing who you want to be. It's got love and joy and hope and fear. It's me, absolutely, and purely me in every note. It's a wonderful quote. Um, 
kind of talking about what it is that you want to convey to the audiences. So can you talk a little bit about your main message in bringing the awakening to uh, the awakening to Vietnamese audiences? Um, my hope is that um, people seeing the awakening, um, and I've actually had some people already tell me so far that my hope has come true, is that people will see my story and after seeing it will feel inspired to follow their own a dream. And, I, and I've had some people actually come up to me after the show and say things like, I felt like you were saying my story. Like that particular song, that's exactly how I feel. And for me, that's the biggest joy out of anything. Um, to actually inspire someone to um, you know, live their own dream despite all of the, you know, there's so many obstacles that you get in the way when you try to live your dream. Um, now, there's this song you mentioned, there's this period where you're standing at the crossroads um, and you're feeling kind of crazy because you don't know where to go and you're feeling frustrated. And there's that song called Crazy in uh, the, one of the 12 songs that you perform in The Awakening. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that song? Well, that song, um, I, as you said, I wrote about a period of time where, um, where I thought that I was going crazy. But it's also a sort of celebration of, of craziness as kind of a sense of uh, liberty at the same time. Because when you get to a point where you're crazy, you kind of, um, you lose your inhibitions. <laughs> and, um, and during that song, I really wanted to, to make use of um, some of the fantastic characters that, that exist in um, Vietnamese traditional theatre. And there, there's two particular char characters. One is um, from Suy Van, Suy Van Zha Zai which is a story about a young Vietnamese girl, wife, who um, pretends to be crazy in order to be able to divorce her unfaithful husband. Mm -hmm. And so um, I took a lot of inspiration from that um, song from Tsui Van Zazai when I was writing the piece. And I was actually listening to that, uh, um, that, that song that she sings. And um, I wrote the, the song with that inspiration. Then when I performed um, the piece at the Opera House, I decided to actually take use of another character, which is Hong Wood Go Hua Kao, which mm -hmm. I mentioned before, the, the lady that turns into a fox. And the reason I wanted to do that was because uh, there's a sense of, um, she, she goes from being um, a, a person to basically becoming, you know, animalistic. And e even though, like, it's an extremely painful experience for her, there almost is a sense of liberty in becoming kind of base and, and mm -hmm. you know, like an animal. And I, and I love the movement from it. It's, it's extremely stylized and, um, and it's kind of ugly but beautiful at the same time. So I was really happy with that combination when I performed it at the Opera House. Right. And now we're going to see Eleanor Copham perform the song called Crazy.
Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, guys, give her another round of applause. She was amazing. Thank you again, Eleanor, for coming on to our show today, Talk Vietnam, to talk about your passion and also share all your ups and downs in this path to doing what it is that you truly love. I hope you'll be successful in all of your endeavors. Thank you very much. Great. I had a good time. Awesome. So for you back at home, I hope you've taken from Eleanor's story something that relates to your life or work. This is an edition of Talk Vietnam dedicated to Eleanor Clapham. Thank you very much, and we'll talk more next time.